fly tying episode. Today I will be tying up another Bob Upham pattern. This fly is called the One-Eyed Poacher. I'm starting with a size 6, 3 extra heavy, 7 extra long streamer hook in the vise, and I've got some 280 UTC thread in black. I'm just going to wind this down to the point of the hook here. Bob named this fly after Edmund Ware Smith's short story book, The One-Eyed Poacher in the Maine Woods. And in the book, there was a character named Jeff Coongate, uh, also known as the One-Eyed Poacher. So I'm just going to snip off the tag end here. So that's how the name of this fly came about. And take a few more turns here towards the point of the hook. Now I'm going to come in with some gold silver tinsel here. The original pattern calls for an embossed gold tinsel. Um, I just have this regular tinsel, which is fine. So I'm just going to wrap this on all the way up towards the hook eye. Try to get nice, even touching turns here so that I can wrap a nice, even tinsel body. And I'll throw a half hitch in here and get a hold of my tinsel. And instead of taking touching turns, I'm going to overlap this slightly just to give it a slightly more embossed look. But you can wrap it either way. You can do touching turns or uh, overlapping turns. And just take it forward. Once I get up here, So I'll grab my thread, take a few turns to bind down the material here. And I'm just going to adjust my hook here. Fell down a little bit. All right, so snip off that tag end and throw a half hitch in because I'm going to cut this thread off. Now that I'm going to start adding the wing material, I'm going to come in with a smaller thread here, 70 denier, black. Cut this tag end off here. And the first material for the wing, uh, I'm just going to build this head up a little bit. But the first material is going to be um, some yellow bucktail. So I'll come in with a clump of yellow here and pull out all of the shorter fibers and the longer fibers. Left with something sparse. I'm just pulling out all those ones that stray out to the side. I'll tie this in on top here. A few turns in front. I'm not applying too much pressure. If you pull straight down as hard as you can here, the hair would stick straight up in the air, so don't do that. And uh, some people like to snip off the yellow hair here. I just leave mine on since I have another color of hair coming. So I'm going to come in with my red here, do the same thing. Pull out the short fibers and any that are, uh, you know, going crazy off to the sides. And a nice, even, sparse clump here. Tie it in, same length. A few turns in front. Don't apply too much pressure. And bring the thread back. Now you can come in with scissors and snip this off. a little fiber there and I'll just wrap a few turns down over the hair. You could apply some glue here if you were worried about your hair pulling out but probably not necessary. If you fish your flies the way I do you'll probably lose it before the hair will come out. So, Alright, now the next material here is some yellow marabou. Uh, any will work. I happen to have this uh, extra select I think it's called. They're pretty large feathers. I'm just going to rip a small clump off the side of one of these here. And I'll just even out the fibers here. And then I'll just come down with it, set it on top, roughly the same length as the hair you just tied in. Same process, a few turns in front. This is obviously 
a lot bulkier to tie in. Just get some nice tight turns in there. You can come in and snip it off if it looks good. And I'll probably clean this up a little bit here. Snip these fibers away. Now for the feather, uh, the feather wing is just one feather, uh, wood duck flank feather here. I'm just gonna snip the fluffy part off the bottom. And you can use mallard flank here. Uh, there's really not much of a difference. I'll show you guys a comparison after I tie this in. So I'm just gonna set this wood duck flank feather on top um, and take a few wraps. I should have brought my thread back to the rear so I'll just do that start taking turns in front and I'm just gonna wind down to the hook eye very carefully here just a couple of turns so that I can bend the stem back once I get this secured I'll come in with the scissors and snip it off and that's it for the wing so now I'm just gonna build up a nice even head here with this black thread try to bind all this down nicely and evenly because I have to um, <coughs> paint on some eyes here or an eye hence the name the one-eyed poacher so once the heads looking nice and even and ready to paint throw some neat uh, whip finishes in and uh, snip the thread off Okay, so the next step is to paint the eyes on. Uh, you can go right ahead and start painting them. I like to come in and just put a light coat of Sally Hansen's on. Uh, that was a little more than a light coat, but once this dries, it will e give you an even more level of a surface to uh, paint on because it just kind of helps to fill in those grooves. So while this dries, let's talk about the feathers. Um, <coughs> so I'm using this lemon wood duck flank feather um, and like I said, you guys can use mallard feather. I think a lot of people that tie this pattern do use the mallard. And you know, there's not much difference between the two. Uh, the wood duck has a little bit y more yellow tone and some darker, thicker barring. Um, one thing you could do is take your regular mallard flank and stick them in a glass of tea. That's right, just a cup of tea. And so you can achieve different uh, tones by using you know more concentrated amount of tea or different type of tea uh, so that's just a fun little experiment to try and of course there's always the option to dye the feathers yourself uh, if you like dyeing feathers or you have some dyed feathers one of my favorite uh, flies that I've kind of adapted from this is using a red mallard flank and using white bucktail on the bottom instead of red of course that's probably a different pattern altogether but one that I recommend. So now that the Sally Hansen's has dried, I'm gonna come in and paint the eyes. Um, the pattern calls for a red iris with a yellow pupil. Uh, so I'm actually gonna paint a white base here so I can get a really vibrant red. I'll just put this one dot of paint on here. Not too bad. I'm gonna let this dry. And this is dried. I'm back with the next coat. This is gonna be red and you can cover up the white completely but if a little bit of white shows that's okay too so now I've got to let the red dry here and I'm only painting these eyes on one side because it's the one-eyed poacher I'm back the red has dried I've got yellow now and that's gonna be the pupil and once this dries I'll come in with some Sally Hansen's and I'll do another coat or two of Sally Hansen's, or you guys can use whatever you like, Solares or uh, Loon UV, whatever you prefer. But I think that's gonna do it for the video, uh, and I'll come in and put another coat on once this dries. 
So this is another popular Grand Lake stream pattern uh, that will work anywhere uh, on salmon, brook trout, bass, you name it. It's got a great uh, motion in the water. It kind of reminds me of a spoon. It's kind of like a little brook trout spoon because it's got that one wing, a really effective fly, and my personal favorite Bob Upham pattern. Hope you guys will give it a try. All right, if you guys have any more information on Bob Upham or the history of this fly or Edmund Ware Smith's uh, book, The one I Poacher, do go ahead and leave some information down in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can hit the subscribe button. And you can also consider becoming a member on Patreon where you get early access to all my content and uh, bonus content.